exponential functions, which allow us to look at growth or decay in an exponential way, are actually quite useful for modeling different types of physical applications. Exponential growth models can be used for many real life applications like bacteria and cell growth, and even financial modeling. Decay models, the ones that move in the opposite direction and go down towards zero, can be used to represent things like atmospheric pressure, drug dispersal throughout the body, and even radioactive decay. One of the simplest examples we can talk about is an equation that allows us to model a quantity growing or decaying exponentially over time. That particular model looks something like this, y of t equal to y0 times e to the kt. Here y of t is the quantity that we're interested in and its value at time t. y0 is the initial quantity, in other words y at 0, and k is some constant, constant that tells us how quickly or slowly the growth or decay occurs. When k is greater than 0, positive, the model represents a growth, while if k is less than 0, a negative value, it represents decay. Let's check out an example. Here we're talking about a lab tech monitoring some bacteria. Pause the video for a moment and have a read through this one and try to pick out the important information and see if you can start to move along forming your own model. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm given these questions is to try to pick out the important information from what I'm told and also to try to write down exactly what the questions are that were asked. In this particular one, we're told that initially, that's a time value, there are 500 bacteria that the lab tech is monitoring. Now remember, initially, that's just another way of saying at t equals zero. So initially there's 500. After four hours, so that's another time value, t equals four, there's 3,500 bacteria. So here we're looking at perhaps n being the number of bacteria, and t being the time after the, the experiment or the monitoring started. So we've got t equals zero and n equal to 500, and at t equals four, n is equal to 3,500. So we know a little bit about the situation. We're then given some questions. Assuming an exponential growth model, that means we can use this kind of equation here. We're asked how many bacteria, so what is n, after 11 hours? So the first question we're given is, what is n at 11? And then the second question, how long did it take for the bacteria population to double? That means how long is saying, what's the t value for the bacteria population to double from its initial value, or 2n0, or 1000 bacteria? So those are our two questions that we're given here. Well, let's look at forming our model and answering those questions. So generally speaking, an exponential growth model takes the form y of t equal to y naught e to the kt. We're going to use our specific letters here though, because we're talking about a number of a bacteria, and say n of t is equal to n naught, or n initially, times e to the kt. But what exactly are n naught and k? We know what n and t are, and e is just that number 2.71 and so on. But what are n naught and k? Well, n naught's probably the easiest one to pick out. It's the initial value that we're given in the question of 500. So n naught is 500. So we can write our model as n of t is equal to 500 e to the kt. And to complete the model, we just need to figure out what k is. To do that, we're going to use the other piece of information that we were told. At t equals 4, n is 3500. So we know that 3500, according to our model, would be n of 4, and that must be equal to 500 multiplied by e to the k, which we don't know, multiplied by the time value of 4. And we just need to rearrange this and solve for the variable k. So we can move through 3500 over 500, or 7, must be equal to e to the k times 4. And then we can take the natural log of both sides, or the e-based log. Log 7 must be equal to 4k. And finally then, k is equal to log 7 over 4. We can substitute this back and we've got the final complete form of our model for the number of bacteria at any point in time. n of t 
equal to 500 e to the k log 7 over 4 times t. And we can use that equation to tell us exactly how many bacteria n there are at any point in time. Now remembering our first question was how many bacteria are there at 11 hours later? So t equals 11. So we can easily answer that one now. n at 11 is going to be 500 e to the log 7 over 4 times 11. If you jump away for a minute and plug that into your calculators, you should find that you get approximately 105,436. That seems like a lot given that we started with 500 and after four hours we had only 3,500, but remember this is an exponential growth model. It looks something like this. So it's reasonable that the values would grow very, very quickly as we move further along in time. Let's have a look now at the second question. The second question asks us, what is the time value such that n of t is equal to 2 times the initial value, or 1,000? Well, this is a similar kind of thing. We just plug the values in and then solve for t. So we've got 1,000 equal to 500 e to the log 7 over 4 multiplied by the t value that we're interested in. Again, we'll divide both sides by 500, 1,000 over 500, which was 2. It's going to be equal to e to the log 7 over 4 times t. We take the natural log. We're left with log 2 is equal to log 7 over 4 times t. And finally, rearrange for t and find that it's equal to log 2 multiplied by 4 all over log 7. And that's equal to, or approximately equal to, 1.42 hours. So that's the time at which we've got a doubled population of bacteria. And you can check back with the information you know already to have a look and see if that makes sense. So that's it now for exponential models. Try the worksheet problems out and maybe have a look back through the other questions and worksheet problems on exponential functions. Remember to be writing down in your notebook anything that you think you need to ask or figure out for yourself afterwards.